Hi, um, I'm Shannon Kendall. I uh, am a recent graduate of the Grace Hopper program at Full Stack Academy, and I am doing a presentation on regular expressions. Um, so I first encountered regular expressions when I was teaching myself code uh, before applying to the academy, and um, I was going through Code Wars, and I hit this challenge dubstep, and it asked us to take uh, an input that was a string of song lyrics that was interspersed with the word wub to be like dubstep, remove all the wubs and return the original song lyrics. So it looked something like that. And um, I thought to myself, oh, that's, that's so easy. I've done three online tutorials and I know about conditional statements and loops, so I'll totally nail this. And I didn't. Um, <laughs> I coded for a while and I wrote a lot of conditions and wasn't getting it to pass and I got really frustrated and I just gave up to look at the solutions to see what I had missed. Um, my code looked kind of like this um, and the top solution looked like this. It was a single line of code and half of it looked like black magic and I got very frustrated and I went through an existential crisis and assumed that I would never become a coder and I should give up now. Um, but it was just um, something I hadn't seen before. It was two things I hadn't seen before. Um, it was a regex-friendly JavaScript method and a regular expression, which is sometimes called regex or regexp. Um, and it really wasn't that scary at all. I just didn't recognize it. Um, so. When I was in the program, I decided to tackle this as a personal project and um, went and figured out what was going on. Um, so regular expressions is actually a uh, low level language. It's close to machine language. Uh, it's used by basically all of the languages. Um, some are much better with it than others. Uh, they grew up with it. But um, it um, has a lot of really common uses like um, validations for passwords or emails. You can use it to search and extract through large files. Uh, you can clean or reformat file names in your database. And you can also use it uh, to split strings to match on a pattern instead of specific characters. Um, it works in three parts. There's the subject, which is the, the string that you're performing the search on. There's the match method that you use. Um, and then there's the actual regex pattern. Um, I'm going to talk a lot uh, in the JavaScript approach because this is a React meetup and I code primarily JavaScript, but if you write in other languages, I would definitely recommend checking that out as well. Um, so as an example, if I stored my phone number as a string, it's not my phone number, um, <laughs> but if I stored my phone number as a string, I could run the test method on it with the regex pattern 916 and it would return true, but um, you can see all the different parts. Uh, but if I ran a different pattern, it would return false, or I could throw it together and use an OR operator and it would still return true. Um, that's the regex OR operator down at the bottom. Um, so I'm going to move in now to kind of explain um, what uh, some of the more basic uh, search patterns are. Uh, a lot of the special operators, because you can search for a literal string, you can write what you're actually looking for, but it's much more powerful to use the special operators in the first place. So the one you just saw was the OR operator. It's basically the same as the JavaScript OR operator, but it's only one stroke instead of two. Um, then there are character sets, which are um, brackets wrapped around a range of characters that will match for one spot in your search. So this would match any lowercase letter in that one um, position. This would match just zero through six, uh, just these three letters. Um, you could actually add multiple ranges in, so A through G or R through W in that one spot. And then you can throw a caret in the front of the pattern. So this is telling it to not match any vowel at that one spot. The caret negates what is in the character set. There's also quantifiers which tell uh, the search uh, engine to match a certain number of the preceding character. So, for example, in this pattern, uh, it would match yes or yes multiple times. Uh, the plus operator is it matches one or more of the preceding character. You can also uh, match zero or more, which is the asterisk. 
so it'll match lol, lols, and I don't know how to pronounce lols with multiple z's, but people use it all the time. Uh, this one I've used before, it, the question mark is an optional uh, operator, so it'll match zero or one time. So it can match JPEG with the E or without it. Um, and then, oh, this one's fun. Have you seen this meme? Uh, it basically breaks down and it says you can tell how interested someone is uh, in you based on how many Y's follow the hey. So, like, if there's just one, you're just friends. But the more Y's there are, the more interested this person is in you until you hit five Y's, which just says that they're drunk. Um, so say you wanted, you, you didn't really know if this girl's into you. So you like go through your text history and you want to tell it to only match like if there's two through four Y's because you don't want to be friend zoned or just a drunk friend. Uh, you can use a range operator, which is the uh, curly brackets and you can tell it to do like just two or you can do like two through four. Uh, so that would match, hey, I'm really into you, but not the friend zoned hey. Um, and you can mix and match these. So for instance, uh, this pattern could match YY or OOO, but be careful because it can also match YOI and that's not a word. Um, there's modifiers, which are also known as flags. And these are commands that go outside of the forward slash brackets that start and end the pattern. Um, these tell, give special instructions on top of the pattern that the regex engine will uh, listen to. So it looks kind of like that. Uh, I stands for ignore case sensitivity. So you can be lazy and just do all lowercase and throw an I on. Uh, G stands for global or greedy. It will grab all possible matches instead of just the first one. Uh, M stands for multi-line. Uh, that's for text that has line breaks in it. And I'll go into more detail on that later. There's a couple other flags, but these are the most commonly used ones. There's meta characters. These are fun. Um, it's a uh, backslash with a letter in front of it. Uh, and it covers a broad range of what you could match against. So there's the white space, which is like spaces, tabs, new lines. There's word, which is actually any alphanumeric character and an underscore. Uh, so letters, numbers, and underscore. Um, there's a digit, obvious. There's word boundaries, which are really cool. So if you want to make sure that like the word starts with this pattern, you put the boundary in front. If you want to make sure it ends with this pattern, you put the boundary at the end, or you can wrap the whole thing in it for an entire word. And then there's the wild card. It's a dot. Using these, um, if my screen name was, like if I had the string, my screen name was scrunch scrunchies are forever 88. It wasn't, I wasn't that cool. But um, I could run this pattern, uh, this regex pattern in the second line and it would return just my screen name because uh, it wraps in the boundaries and it captures any word characters plus underscores and numbers. Okay, there's anchors, which um, tell the search engine to only match if that's where the string starts or ends. So this would tell it to begin. Um, the caret is not exclusive if it's not wrapped in a character set. Um, and then if you want to end, you put the anchor at the end. Um, I included this uh, escape character, so you can see like if you're using a wildcard for what it actually, or, or any um, special character for what it actually is, you can just escape it. Uh, the same way you escape like apostrophes and strings. And then um, say, say that you like took a really great selfie and you want to post it to Instagram, but you don't want to come across like vain or anything like that, but it's a great selfie. So you're going to throw like song lyrics or a line of poetry underneath it. And then that uh, gives you like cool points instead of being obnoxious. Um, and there's this one line from this epic poem uh, in Paradise Lost. It's like a, it's an entire book though, and you don't want to have to like search through it. And you know it starts like, begin or no, better something something in heaven, uh, and you don't want to find it. You can um, throw this pattern, which tells it it starts with better. There's characters in between. It ends with heaven. Throw an anchor on it. Throw the multi-line flag so it will an only anchor at the beginning and ends of lines instead of the entire subject. And it will return, oh, that's right, better to reign in hell than to serve in heaven. And you can post your selfie and not be a douche. <laughs> no one can see through that. <laughs> um, and then uh, the last one I'm going to talk about is groups. Uh, if you put things in parentheses, it groups them together so you can throw special instructions on that group. 
Um, so like in this instance, I'm going to use the or operator and then put the optional um, special character on there. So this will match roommate, flatmate, or just mate, because both of those in the group are optional. All right, so I'm going to um, kind of do an example of building a regular expression pattern uh, by searching for an address. It's uh, a really, well, it can look really long, so I'm going to build it step by step. So for a street address, which is the house number, the street name, and then the street abbreviation, um, I'm going to start with the house number, and that's just a set number of digits. I don't know how many, so I'll just add the plus sign, and then there'll be a space. And then streets can have two names, so I'll put a character set up to say match all word characters and spaces however many times we need, plus the following space. And then there's the street abbreviation. And I don't know if people are going to do like ST or like write out Boulevard. So I'll tell it to do a word character in a range of two to nine characters long. Uh, there might be a period if they used street or something like that. So that's an option. And then there will be a, a literal comma and another space. So that's my street address. Uh, the other ones are a lot simpler. Cities, it's the same thing as a street name words and space characters, however many times long, comma and a space. State abbreviations, it's two letters. Um, and then zip code, it's five digits. So I'll string it all together. And it looks a little bit like a beast, but I broke it down. And I can run almost any standard uh, address on it. I didn't include apartment numbers because when I included the entire pattern, it ran off the slide. So <laughs> we'll pretend people don't live in apartments and everyone lives in a white picket fence house. But uh, this would match the pattern. The pattern would match this. Um, so it's pretty, pretty useful. Uh, but there's more that you can do. Um, so say I want to seed my database and I want to find all of these addresses and I want to take the individual chunks to put them into individual columns or properties or whatever in my database. If you wrap subsections of your regex in parentheses, it creates a capturing group. So uh, any of the uh, methods that return the array of your matched uh, string pattern will then follow that pattern with uh, every subsequent matching group. So it becomes really, really powerful. Um, so this is what it would look like um, if I did that with my address. And I would run this um, string method against it. And it would return an array with the matched pattern. And then each following index is everything that I wanted to grab. OK, so I know I talked about using the groups for like using an OR operator. Like Maybe that's what you're using them for and you don't want to capture. Uh, if you put a question mark and a colon at the beginning of your group, it will tell the regex engine, don't grab this. Just use it as a group. Uh, so this will only match this or that. Um, so here's one thing that I found really tricky when I was trying to teach myself regular expressions before I took any like formal tutorial course on it. I was able to kind of build my pattern, but I didn't know what to do with it once I had it. Um, so in JavaScript, there is actually a regexp class. Um, and then there are methods in the string class that take regular expressions as arguments. Um, and there's things like uh, you've seen string prototype.match. There's a search and a regex exec, which is similar to match. And you can use reg regex in the split instead of a character, and so on and so forth. Um, so definitely look into it. If you're going to use the regexp class in JavaScript, just read the documentation on it because it actually affects like a global object that can uh, give you results you weren't expecting if you didn't read into that. Um, so some final tips and tricks. Anchor your patterns whenever pos possible. It gives you a little bit more control and uh, control is a very nice thing. Um, uh, along those lines, be specific. Say what you want, but also say what you don't want. Uh, you can uh, aid this by using contrasts. So uh, this pattern, if I was searching for hashtags, it would match the hash and then all of the word characters. But some people are really annoying and like smash their hashtags together or break the rule by like throwing in symbols that aren't allowed to be in hashtags. So um, I'm using the caret to tell it to not match any spaces and to also not match any word characters. Um, 
if you're using a meta character, if you flip it to a capitalized letter, it'll flip what it's matching. So instead of matching word characters, it matches anything that's not a word character. And by throwing the caret in front, it tells it, don't do that. Um, oh, JavaScript regex engine is actually the worst regex engine compared to any of the other languages. Um, it's still really cool. They've made a lot of advancements. It's really useful. You can use it on your front end and your back end for a lot of things. But if you're kind of stoked on this new little micro language, definitely look into uh, what other languages can do. There's a lot more tricks up regex's sleeve. Um, if you want to look into this, regexr is a great site. It uh, allows you to build your pattern against sample text. So you can see if it's actually working or not. And it has some glossaries and examples and shortcuts for you. Um, I really like this site, rexegg.com. It covers things that a lot of tutorial sites gloss over. Uh, it's really in depth. And you could tell that this guy is like really stoked on regex. So it's, <laughs> it's a great site. And then obviously uh, check with MGN before you use things to make sure you're using it correctly. Um, my name is Shannon Kendall again. If you feel inclined to laugh at things that I think are funny, uh, feel free to follow me on these platforms. Other than that, uh, go forth and regex. Um, well, first of all, uh, Shannon, thank you for that entertaining and enlightening talk. Um, I was wondering uh, about your experience using this in your uh, personal projects or, or work, because I, I, I suppose the, the uh, preconception that I have uh, about uh, regex is that you know they tend to be so esoteric uh, that uh, oftentimes people prefer to just not use them, even though they are quite powerful. I was wondering whether you could speak to that. Yeah. Um, I, anyone who's worked on a project with me knows that I get stoked whenever I can use regex at all. Um, there, there's a lot of jokes and comics about that. Um, but I've, I've used it when I needed to validate that input was specifically correct. So like I've used it on forms a lot. Um, if, if you don't want to have to build it yourself, you can usually search and someone's like, this is the regex pattern for emails. And it's really thorough. And so you're like, great, copy and paste. Um, but I, I like building it out for myself. Um, I think I've used it, implemented it on, on the back end as well to um, like when I'm making SQLize um, requests into my back end to like match where like it has this kind of pattern, things like that. Um, once you start using them, it gets a little bit addictive. But uh, yeah, I know, I know that there are a lot of people that uh, don't care. And maybe that's my nerd level of like, but the power. <laughs> um, so yeah, I, you, you, I start finding like small places here and there to use it. Um, yeah. What's the, um, what's the problem with the JavaScript red text, like the, the thing that you found? That's yeah, it doesn't support. Um, some of the some things that other languages do, like um, the look around, look look behinds. One of them it doesn't support. Um, I'm not as familiar because I don't use them because it doesn't work. Um, and there there are a lot of like uh, there's a lot of special cases like uh, explosive quantifiers and like lazy. Um, stuff. Uh, so there's a lot of, th there's some really like niche things or very specific things that give you a lot of more control that aren't available in JavaScript. Um, but I know that like, like even Python, if you speak Python, it has a lot more support for certain uh, characteristics of regex than just JavaScript. Um, have you heard about the new regex features coming down the pipe? No. Uh, this, will, this will make me happy then. TC39 just, um, for ES2018, added named capture groups. Uh, oh, S, yeah. Yeah. Um, the S flag for regular expressions, look behind assertions, and uh, unicode properties. Unicode is the best. Oh, yeah. 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 Okay. So, yeah. Yeah. It gets real, you, you get real nerdy once you get into it. <laughs> So, uh, regex is like a global uh, protocol, or every language implemented uh, in a different way. 
Um, yeah, it, it's it's a little bit of both. Like it is a global protocol in that like the rules of regex um, are. I'm, 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 I might be wrong on this, but I'm, I'm pretty certain that it's the rules of regex will apply across all um, languages, but certain languages don't support certain aspects of regex. Is yeah, more more along the lines, but it, it is like a a global language, in in that fact. Thank you.